you are here, Padventure, you have never accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. You have never confessed Him as Lord and Savior. It's an opportunity right now. If you are one person like that, can I just see you just raise your hand wherever you are? You only want to pray with you and lead, to, lead you to Jesus. It doesn't matter if you are being attending church. It doesn't matter. Some people attend church, and honestly, they don't even know Jesus. They have no idea who Jesus is. Am I seeing any? Just place that right on your chest and make a mess with God. The Lord, help me. I'm back home. I stepped aside in this way. I stepped aside in that way. Oh, Lord, help me. Lord Almighty, help me. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And so shall it be. In the mighty name of Jesus. Well, that's that the whole nation. Lord, thank you for that grace for provision. Amen. If the children were not blessed, how would they gather us like this today? Lord, we give you all the glory. Thank you, Jehovah Jehovah. You are our provider. Thank you for provision. Thank you for providence. Thank you because our mom that did not die in vain. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for every grace you enjoy. Thank you for the grace that will pass down to the children and the grandchildren. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit will comfort this family. In the name of Jesus. There shall be no untimely death in this family. Any play, come let and join in the mighty name of Jesus. You and your spouses, we know nothing, we hear nothing but goodness and mercy in the mighty name of Jesus. Henceforth, in this family, your testimony shall be awake, my glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Your glory comes alive in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, every desire of your heart, the Lord Almighty will make according to Ephesians 3:20. He will answer your prayers beyond what you think or ask or can even imagine in the mighty name of Jesus. Anytime Remember, my heart, you will give glory to God in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we come in the many parts of this of the of the celebration into your hands. Holy Spirit, take absolute control in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. King of kings, we appreciate you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's get ready for Thanksgiving. And I'd like to invite Pastor. Purpose 
and when you have done carrying out that purpose, we leave. It will hurt to accept because we never see it coming, but we have to accept it. It's life again, like I said. Death is a part of life. It's the end. Every story must have an end. And sometimes in the end, we notice the collateral beauty. Death is what gives life its meaning. It's what informs us on how to live properly. And in a way, I think it keeps us on our toes as well. And yes, death will bring pain, it's going to give us grief. But Vision said, what is grief if not love persevering? You cannot grieve if you do not love. I've learned a lot this year. I've learned what true loss means. I've seen pain, I've felt pain. It's in my body, but I'm just okay. My heart broke that Friday afternoon. I got that call. I said, my first love was my mother. What can you do? All that I'm not even accept what you don't want to accept. You, know, you have no control over it. So just have to, just have to accept. Not a day goes by that I don't think of my grandmother. But I've learned about time as well. I've learned the good and the bad news about time. I've learned that the bad news is that time flies. But the good news is that we are the captains and the pilots of our souls. We have to seize the day. Carpe diem. How life will remain but time will pass. And how life is so full but so short. And how today will be remembered as once upon a time. But in that time, we we'll learn to love, we we'll hurt, we we'll mourn, we we'll grieve, we we'll cry, we we'll learn to love and live again. And one day when we wake up, we only have memories of my grandmother. And when we talk about her, we we'll say she wants us. They say life is a journey. And part of the journey is the end. And I guess the whole of life becomes an act of letting go. But what truly hurts the most is not taking a moment to say goodbye. The pain can never truly be gone. We're still going to feel it when we wake, when we never Because it hurts for a million different reasons. And it feels like she's taking the best part of your heart and the rest is shattered. Reverend mentioned the story of Methuselah. And I understand that, yes. Methuselah lived for 969 years. Nothing to write about. No record in the Bible for any of his achievements. But when I took a closer look into his lineage, I realized that from his lineage came Noah, Abraham, King David, King Solomon, and eventually Jesus Christ. And it buttresses my point of we are here for a purpose. I don't know what happened, I don't know what God was thinking. I feel, but I just believe that <coughs> Methuselah had to leave that long in order for those people to come. And I'm sure that our achievements in life are not just those things that we buy. Cars, jewelry, houses that we possess. Our children, and your children, also our achievements. And I'm sure that in my grandmother's final moments, when she saw my mother, her daughter by her side, and how worried she was, she, she thought about her life. She thought about the children that she had, the life that she imparted. She thought about the, the children that they raised with love and how love filled out home at all times. And she knew that she lived a life that was full. And that's the point of it. It's, it's one thing to just come and it's another thing to just exist. It's one thing to live and it's another thing to exist. Our children will carry our names, not these things that we possess. 
I didn't know I'd ever get to see my grandmother again. That's why. So I know that her love is with me. It's with all of us. It's with the people that she won't pass. You can still hear her voice in It's life. It is life. But we should seek solace in the certainty that we can still visit her in a place called memory and in a time called past. Ecclesiastes says that there's a time to mourn, there's a time to dance. We are mourned, we cry. Some of us, most of us are still grieving. I cry. But now is not the time to cry. She lived 69 years and she impacted so many people in so many different ways. And I think that now is the time to celebrate the life, the great life she lived and the legacy that she left behind. Because that is the collateral beauty of it. Thank you very much. We are deep. These are the words. They said our children will leave our names and not these things. But unfortunately, people leave these things for the children and not the name. And the Bible says a good name is better. Not that these things are not good, but a good name is better. I pray that God will give us the wisdom of Jesus. Everlasting King of Glory, we thank you. For how far you have brought us today, may your name be glorified. Thank you for your word that came out so strong. Thank you for everyone here present. Thank you, King of Glory, for the beautiful memories of our own that we've shared. May your name be glorified in the name of Jesus. As we bring this session to a close, Spirit of the Most High God, continue with us as we proceed to the next phase of today's celebration. May your name be glorified in the name of Jesus. Those who are still on their way, bring them here safely. And at the end of today, all glory, honor, and adoration will be ascribed to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.